Oh boy, we got a good one today. Guess what I got my hands on? Apple Watch Ultra. Hey there, I'm Dave from Chase the Summit and this is my in-depth review of the brand new Apple Watch Ultra. I've been wearing the Apple Watch Ultra for a little over a week now, which isn't a ton of time, but I do think I spent enough time with this watch to gather my thoughts and share them in this video today. During my time with this thing, I've taken it on my daily runs, my weekend long runs, and I've lived my everyday life with this thing glued to my wrist. Let's rewind and talk about Apple's launch event because if you watch that launch event, then you know Apple is marketing this watch towards rugged outdoor enthusiasts and endurance athletes, people who demand the most from their wearable tech, and they showed people hanging off the side of cliffs and mountains with blistering snow blowing past them and running through hot desert sun and even scuba diving into the depths near the ocean floor, all while wearing the Apple Watch Ultra on their wrist. While I cannot say I do all those activities, I do train for and run ultra marathons up to 100 miles in duration. If you want to learn what that's all about, check out one of my recent race videos. I also go hiking and backpacking, and I occasionally spend time time in the mountains, ice climbing and mountaineering. Oh, and I also have four children, so yeah, durability is a must. Previously, I've always worn dedicated sports watches for these kinds of activities, like a Garmin Phoenix, for example, but I do love the elegance of Apple products. Their software, their design, their ecosystem, it all just works really well. I even own an Apple Watch Series 7 that I enjoy wearing when I'm not doing any of these crazy activities, just for day-to-day -day life. This thing is a joy to use. So when I first heard about the Apple Watch Ultra, I was excited at the thought of one watch that could potentially do it all for me. Does Apple Watch Ultra actually live up to the hype? Is it ultra enough for ultras? Well, I've got a hot take on that question. I'm gonna wait till later in this video to answer. So in this video, I'm gonna first walk through the hardware and all the new and exciting features on the Apple Watch Ultra. Then we'll take a look at a bunch of test data I have like battery life, GPS, and heart rate accuracy. And then we'll wrap it all up with sort of my final thoughts and who I think this watch is for. First things first, purchasing options and pricing. The Apple Watch Ultra only comes in one version, so that makes it pretty easy. It's a 49 millimeter case size and all Apple Watch Ultra do have cellular built in by default. The Apple Watch Ultra comes in at $800 here in the USA. That price will vary depending where you are in the world. And the only difference when you're shopping for one on Apple's website is going to be what kind of band is included in the box. Three new bands or loops as Apple calls them were announced with the Apple Watch Ultra and they sent me two. I've got the Alpine loop here, which is kind of designed for climbers and things like that. Then there's the ocean loop, which is mainly designed for water sports. And then there's the trail loop, which I don't have. That's sort of a Velcro style and that's more for endurance sports and trail running and things like that. One quick note about the loops and the bands with the Apple Watch Ultra is that the connection to the Apple Watch Ultra is actually the same as the connection to the older Apple Watches, like on the Series 7. So you can actually take the Series 7 band or any band that you might have and put it on your brand new Ultra. So you're not kind of locked to these new bands. They work with all Apple Watch bands. When it comes to the unboxing experience and setup of Ultra, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but if you do want to see my initial unboxing and reaction to seeing this thing for the first time, you can check out my dedicated unboxing video that I'll post up here. But in this video, we're just gonna skim past that and talk about the hardware. When it comes to the feeling in the hand of the Apple Watch Ultra, it feels incredibly well built. This thing is made out of premium materials and it feels really nice in the hand. The buttons are all very nice and tactile and clicky and the digital crown is really smooth and nice to operate. I can't really put into words how this thing feels in my hand and on my wrist. It just feels really well built like it's built like a tank. The case itself is made out of titanium and feels really robust and durable, and it comes in at 49 millimeters tall, 44 millimeters wide and about 14 and a half millimeters thick, which does sound very large for an Apple Watch if you compare it to something like a Series 7. You can see there's a significant size difference between the Ultra and the Series 7. And especially if you put them on their sides, the Ultra is quite a bit thicker. However, because Ultra is designed for endurance sports and adventure, I think it's fair to compare it to something like a Garmin Enduro 2 or the Garmin Phoenix 7X. And in that case, it's really not that big of a watch compared to these lo other large sports watches. And for reference, this is what the Apple Watch Ultra looks like on my 165 millimeter circumference wrist. In terms of weight, the Apple Watch Ultra comes in at 61.3 grams, which again is going to sound very heavy compared to its little brother with the Series 7 and Series 8 coming in around 38 grams for the aluminum model. But once again, we have to remember this is more of an outdoor enthusiast watch. And if you compare it to something like a Garmin Phoenix 7, this watch comes in at 56 grams. So these are only five grams apart. And for a quick size comparison, here's a bunch of watches to compare it to all the way in the left here we have the Coros Pace 2 which is the smallest watch on the table and the cheapest. 
Then we've got the Apple Watch Series 7, the Apple Watch Ultra, the Garmin Epix Gen 2, and finally, the Garmin Tactic 7, which is a 51 millimeter case size. In terms of aesthetics, the Apple Watch Ultra has a very unique look. You may love it, you may hate it, it is what it is. I kind of like the look. It kind of reminds me of a submarine or something with these like bump outs on the side here. But the design isn't just for looks, it's also utility. The Apple Watch Ultra is certified to mil standard 810. That's things like shock and water resistance and its operating range in terms of temperature is between minus 20 C and 55 C or 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty impressive. Hey, quick interruption. If you're finding this video fun or entertaining or educational or anything, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below because that really helps me out. And if you're planning on picking up an Apple Watch Ultra or any watch I show in this video, I'll have them linked in the description down below and those links do help support this channel. So use them. Okay, back to the video. Now I'm just gonna walk around the perimeter of the Apple Watch Ultra and talk about some of the new features. Up top here, you're gonna see a small hole, and that hole is actually a depth gauge and altimeter. This will both determine your elevation change and the depth of the water that you're currently in. We'll talk about that a little later on in this video. Below the depth gauge is the new digital crown on the Apple Watch Ultra. The size of this has been greatly enhanced to be able to be used with gloves on or with sweaty hands or anything like that. However, I have noticed due to the increased size of the digital crown, when I'm wearing the watch, it tends to actually pinch my skin in some situations when I'm rolling it. It can actually kind of grind on the backside of my skin on my wrist there, and it can be uncomfortable in some situations. So I do find myself bending my wrist down a little bit to use the digital crown. That's just something I noticed. It might not be a problem for you, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Below the digital crown, there's one of three microphones that we'll talk about in a minute. Then we've got the new side button here that's used to access your recent apps and things like that and it's been kind of raised above the surface of the watch so you can feel it without looking at it which is a nice touch. Flipping the watch to the other side we've got the third microphone in the three microphone array then we've got the primary speaker which is used for making phone calls or any audio coming out of the device. Below that we have the new action button. This button is fully configurable and you can also use it for things like starting activities but we'll talk about that in a minute. And then at the bottom here this final port is the secondary speaker and it's also the siren. You heard me right there's a built-in emergency siren built into the app Apple Watch Ultra. So the siren gets up to 86 decibels loud, which is quite loud. And Apple says they designed this to sound unnatural in nature. So if you're out trail running or hiking and you trigger this, it should be a weird sound for someone to hear. So I'm out here on the trails in the woods and I wanted to do a real life test of that new emergency siren feature in the environment that you'd use it. As the siren goes off, I'm gonna walk further and further away from the camera. And I wanna see how this picks up over distance to see how far away I can get while still hearing that alert. Ah, oh, glad no one stole my camera. All right, I got up to about 300 feet away, 400 feet maybe. How'd it sound? Could you still hear it? On top of all the sensors I just talked about, the Apple Watch Ultra has a few more up its sleeve. It's got an electrocardiogram or ECG built in, which is the same as the Series 7 and Series 8. It's got a high G accelerometer, which is actually the same as the new Apple Watch Series 8, and that's used for car crash detection. It's also got a gyroscope, a compass, an ambient light sensor to adjust the brightness of the display, and a body temperature sensor, which is the same, again, as the Series 8. This detects temperature changes in your body while you're sleeping. It's really only only useful now if you're a woman using it for cycle tracking or ovulation tracking. However, I am hopeful that they'll develop this further down the road to pick up illness or maybe even for training recovery. That would be really cool. Moving right along, let's talk about the display on Apple Watch Ultra because this is probably the best display on any smartwatch I've ever tested on this channel. It's really good. Not only is the display good, but it's also covered with a sapphire crystal lens that's flat. Instead of the older style Apple Watches that have the curved edges, this one's flat, which makes it much more durable and less prone to scratching. This display is 1.92 inches and because it's got this square aspect ratio, it gives you a lot more screen real estate than something like this Garmin Epix Gen 2, which is round. In terms of visibility with this display, it's quite good. You can be in just about any lighting situation and see this display no problem. I've been in direct sunlight out on a run and I'm still able to see the mileage and distance and pace and things at a glance with zero issues because of how bright this display actually gets. This display gets up to 2000 nits of brightness, which is incredible incredibly bright. And when I heard about that spec, it had me wondering the usefulness of using this as a flashlight. So you can dive into your quick menu here and tap on the screen and use this as a flashlight. And as you can see, 
it's quite bright. As an adventure-oriented watch, having a built-in flashlight is pretty important because if your headlamp dies while you're on a hike or something, you can actually use this as sort of a backup light source. It's not ideal, but it could get the job done in a pinch. And that's what got me thinking, how does this compare to something like the built-in flashlight on a Garmin Fenix 7X? Because this watch, if you don't know, has an actual built-in flashlight. And so I did some testing. I took both these into a dark room and kind of stood the same distance away from a wall to see how much light they cast. And there's really no comparison. The Enduro 2 or the Phoenix 7X here has quite a bright flashlight as compared to just using the screen on the Apple Watch Ultra. But in a pinch, I could see the Apple Watch Ultra's flashlight or display being useful if you really need it. When it comes to the user interface and smartwatch features on the Apple Watch Ultra, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because it's basically the exact same watch as something like an Apple Watch Series 7 or even the Series 8. They're all kind of the same. And that's to say they have an incredible smartwatch experience, probably the best on the market. And in particular on the Apple Watch Ultra, because of that larger, brighter display, this thing is a joy to use. Even if you're just going through your podcast episodes or checking your email, this thing is awesome. It's like having a little iPhone right on your wrist. Like I said, when I went through the hardware, the new Apple Watch Ultra has a new three microphone array to get the best sample of your voice as possible in loud situations. So it uses beam forming technology to choose which microphone to use when recording your voice. By the way, I'm using the microphone right now to record the audio for this video, and I'm using the Voice Memo app to record it. How does it sound? In my testing so far, the audio quality coming from these microphones has been really good, and I'm really impressed. And everyone I've talked to on the phone to test these microphones out hasn't even been able to tell. I've been talking to them on a watch and not a real phone. So overall, very impressed with the microphones on the Apple Watch Ultra. By the way, the Apple Watch Ultra also has a new speaker on board, which is much louder than the standard Apple Watch to take phone calls in loud environments. And this is what it sounds like. In my testing so far, again, it's been really nice to have a louder speaker Phone, and it's almost on par with something like an iPhone speakerphone, but not quite there. Like I said, the user experience on Ultra is pretty similar to just about any other Apple Watch in the past. However, there's a few new features that make it stand out a little bit, like this new watch face that was announced called Wayfinder. The Wayfinder watch face is useful for those adventurers out there. It's got a bunch of data fields that you can configure to show anything like the current elevation, the UV index, you can show your lo longitude and latitude, and a bunch of other useful complications. It's also got some shortcuts for things like the compass app and the weather as well so you can dive right into those and you can fully customize this watch face by diving into the complications and choosing what information you want to actually show another cool feature about this watch face is that it actually has a night view mode if you roll the digital crown you can roll it into that night view which is only red text so you're not getting blinded when you're looking at your watch now this only affects the watch face i wish it affected the entire user interface but right now turns the watch face red, but if you dive into your app menu, you're still gonna see all the colors there. Now let's talk about the workout app on Apple Watch Ultra. This has the OS 9 update, which is available for Series 7, Series 5, Series 6. It's on a bunch of watches now, and with this update, you get a whole bunch more capabilities in terms of running. For instance, now you have native running power on the Apple Watch Ultra. You can get your ground contact time and stride length, and then a bunch of advanced training metrics on the Apple Watch Ultra are now available. If you wanna learn all about Watch OS 9 and that big update, you can check out my video I have dedicated to that update there. I'm not gonna cover everything in this video, just know it's a huge upgrade in terms of sports and fitness for the Apple Watch Ultra. However, there is one weird thing when it comes to Apple Watches and running power, it's that when you're walking like I am right now, the watch won't actually detect any power at all. And the fact is when you're walking, you do produce some sort of power, so it's not totally accurate, but I don't think that's gonna screw up your metrics that much. And I think Apple left this out for a reason. So that is something to note. I think my favorite change on Apple Watch Ultra though is this new action button. The new action button can be configured using something called Precision Start to start your activity. Previously on the older Apple Watches, you'd see a three, two, one countdown and then you start your run. So you basically tap on the screen, it would count down and then you start your run. Now with Apple Watch Ultra, you can start your run by tapping on the action button, which is a huge deal for me. I much prefer that than tapping on the screen. And not only that, if you've got sweaty hands or it's raining or anything like that, using the action button is much more more useful than tapping on a screen. Another change with OS 9 is you can actually see in the corner here when you've got a GPS fix. I'm probably not gonna get a fix because I'm in a building right now, but if I did, this would change to a solid color and then I know I can actually start my run. Where previously on older Apple Watches, you just had to guess and hope that you had a GPS fix before you started your activity. Another big upgrade to OS 9 and the Apple Watch Ultra is that you can now modify your workout views right on the watch without using your phone. Where previously, you had to dive into your iPhone settings 
settings to change these. Now I can click edit views here and I can scroll down and I can see my two pages of metrics. And if I wanna change anything, I simply hit the little pencil icon and now I can go through and change running power to something else if I want to. It's all very simple and it's laid out really nicely in the app. You can also design and execute workouts right on the Apple Watch Ultra and OS 9 now, which is a nice touch. You can do things like a timed goal, a distance goal, your virtual pacer here, a calorie goal for how much calories you wanna burn, and you can do things like an eight by 400 meter repeat, and you can adjust this any way you want to. Another nice upgrade on Ultra is that you can now have six metrics per page in your activity. So previously that was set to five. So now you've got extra data fields that you can have per page, and you can have two pages of six. So that's a lot of information at a glance. Now I wanna talk about the new Compass app on Apple Watch Ultra, and this is a big upgrade in terms of navigation features, because now you can actually set up waypoints with within the Compass app while you're out doing a hike or something like that. So if I'm out on my hike and I wanna remember a point I'm at for like my camp or something, I can click on this little icon in the corner which looks like a little pin. I get my location on a little map, but I also get this little label and I can go in on the keyboard and type in anything I want here. So I could name this Camp One for instance. And below that, I can assign a color for this pin when it's displayed on my map. And I can even change the icon or symbol that's displayed when it's displayed on my Compass map as well. So here I can choose my camp or my tent and click done. And if I scroll the wheel in this Compass app, you've got a few things going on here. First, there's like a shaded view in front of me that indicates where I'm looking. So if I spin the watch around, you can see that waypoint is moving around as it, and as it comes into view, it'll display the icon. And if I roll the wheel here, I can actually zoom in and out on the map screen to see other waypoints that might be further out. The Compass app has a few other features. I can click these little feet down here and this will actually allow me to retrace my steps. If I was out hiking or something, I could use this to get to back to the start of my activity. The really cool thing about the Compass app in the backtrack function is that it doesn't need an activity running on the Apple Watch, it does it automatically in the background. So if you go out on a run or a hike or you're just walking your dog or something and you get lost and you didn't start an activity on your watch, you can still get back to the beginning of your activity, which is great. So I'm out here taking a little hike and I wanted to test the backtrack function with the new Compass widget on the Apple Watch Ultra. So I'm about a half a mile into the woods now and this is the perfect scenario. I'm not using a GPS activity right now and maybe I got lost and maybe I want to get back home but I clicked on the backtrack feature on the Apple Watch Ultra and unfortunately there's no steps to retrace. For some reason it decided not to record this activity even though this is the exact situation it's designed for. So I'm going to continue testing this and see if I can figure out why it didn't record that. I have tested the backtrack function on the Apple Watch Ultra before during a couple of runs and it seemed to work fine for running but I was also recording a GPS activity in those situations so I don't know if that helps or not but yeah, it's kind of weird it didn't record it for this one. Just something to note, let's move on. In terms of mapping and navigation, this is a big step up on the Apple Watch Ultra and OS 9 in general. However, it still really doesn't compare to the mapping and navigation features you get on something like a Garmin Phoenix 7X, where you've got full-blown contour maps and topo maps and all kinds of information built into the watch, downloaded to it with no cellular connection required, where you just don't get that out of the box with the Apple Watch. Now let's talk about wellness tracking with the Apple Watch Ultra. I'm not gonna dive too deep on this because it's very similar to all of the other Apple Watches, including the Series 7. Ultra will collect your daily wellness metrics like your heart rate, your SpO2, your heart rate variability throughout the day, your steps, your calories burned, and you do get advanced sleep metrics like sleep stages with deep sleep, REM sleep, and all those other things, which is great. In terms of accuracy, this seems pretty good, judging by what other people are saying about it. I'm not a scientist, so I'm not gonna go there. However, I will say the one thing that I've always had a gripe about with the Apple ecosystem and all this wellness data is that it does collect a ton of information, which is great. However, Apple doesn't really give you any digestible way to use this data. They don't give you any actions to do to improve your health. They just kind of throw numbers at you and say, this is how you slept. For example, Apple Watch might collect super accurate sleep trends, but what do you do with that information? How can you sleep better? Are you getting too much sleep? Are you not getting enough sleep? This is an area where they could use some improvement and where competitors like Garmin still have the advantage. And don't get me wrong, Apple does collect a ton of information and it seems very accurate, but without any guidance, I don't know what to do with it. Now let's dive into training tools because the same could be said for activity and training tools. Apple's activity app will give you an idea of whether or not you've closed your rings for the day in terms of your step counts or calorie goals. And you can also find your estimated VO2 max with an Apple Health cardio fitness metric. However, there's no additional guidance like training load, training status, recovery advisor to let you know whether or not you're overdoing it or you're not doing enough in terms of training. In a watch at this price point specifically designed for athletes, it 
it's something I would expect. Of course, you can download an app for that, and we'll talk about that later in this video. Moving right along, let's talk about diving in water sports, because that's one area the Apple Watch Ultra really stands out. The Apple Watch Ultra is WR100 waterproof, and it's also EN13319 certified. I don't really know what that means, but apparently it's really good if you're a diver. When it comes to the landscape of smartwatches and sport watches out there, there aren't many that are dive certified, including a lot of garments on the market. You can go in the water with them, but they're not certified for scuba diving. The Apple Watch Ultra, on the other hand, is certified for diving and it has a depth gauge built right into the watch, along with a depth app that will automatically launch when you go under the water. Again, I'm not a diver or somebody who goes scuba diving, but I can say I took this thing in the pool and the depth gauge did come on. It was super cool and it seemed pretty accurate. Okay, we've gotten to the big one, battery life on the Apple Watch Ultra. Buckle up because this one will take a while. On paper, Apple states that the Apple Watch Ultra will get about 36 hours of use with typical use with default settings. The Apple Watch Ultra can also charge from zero to 80% in about one hour and about 0% to 100% in about an hour and a half. Now, if you're an Apple user, you probably know that Apple underestimates their battery specs for some reason. For example, on my Apple Watch Series 7, this watch is a year old, I can get an easy 36 six hours of use with this watch just by turning off the always on display and not using it in a GPS activity. It's pretty easy to get there. This watch had a claimed battery life of 18 hours. So I was eager to test out the Apple Watch Ultra since they were claiming this watch had 36 hours of battery life. And I have good news because the Apple Watch Ultra and my testing with battery life overperformed by quite a bit. So I think it's pretty safe to say that you can get about two days of battery life with the Apple Watch Ultra by making some minor tweaks to the settings and doing about 30 minutes of GPS activity per day. Speaking of GPS, let's talk about GPS battery life because that's a whole other animal. Apple states out of the box with default settings, you should be able to get about 12 hours in a GPS activity. And Apple says if you need longer than 12 hours of battery life, you can do a few things like turning off the cellular connection and the always on display and get up to around 16 hours of battery life with full GPS and heart rate accuracy. In my real life testing of the GPS battery life on the Apple Watch Ultra, I was seeing pretty similar stats. So in default settings with always on display turned off, I was seeing a loss of eight to 9% per hour in a GPS activity, which would result in about 12 to 13 hours of use. However, I did try switching into low power mode in a GPS activity, which resulted in a 6% loss per hour, which is much lower and would result in like 17 hours of battery life while still getting full GPS and heart rate performance. I'll be doing a ton more testing on the battery life of the Apple Watch Ultra very soon. So stay tuned for a follow-up video on that. I haven't had the watch long enough to really learn all about it yet, but it's looking pretty good so far for an Apple Watch. And I say for an Apple Watch for a reason, because if we compare the battery life on the Apple Watch Ultra to something like the Garmin Enduro 2 here, this watch gets over a month on a single charge in standby mode and over a hundred hours in a GPS activity, which is just bonkers and totally on a different level than something like the Apple Watch Ultra, but we'll talk about that at the end of this video. And on the topic of battery life, there's one more thing to talk about. There's an additional mode coming to the Apple Watch Ultra later this fall called Power Optimization Mode, which will result in way longer battery life, up to 60 hours in a GPS activity, which is crazy. However, when I asked Apple about this, they told me that it's going to reduce the accuracy of the GPS and heart rate by sampling it less often. So GPS will be sampled every two minutes and heart rate every one minute, making it a lot less accurate, but they're gonna to try to use some algorithms and Apple map data to fill in the gaps to make it more accurate. So we'll have to see how that actually works out. If they can get up to 60 hours in battery life in one activity, that's gonna be really impressive, but something tells me it might come with some sacrifices. And speaking of GPS, let's talk about GPS accuracy and modes on Apple Watch Ultra. The Apple Watch Ultra features dual band or multi-band GPS mode, which is kind of the gold standard right now. On top of the multi-frequency GPS chip inside the Apple Watch Ultra, they're also using algorithms to increase accuracy by using Apple Map data for road, bike, and trail use, which is really impressive. The end result is that the Apple Watch Ultra is performing really well in my testing so far in GPS activities for running. And compared to other devices like the Garmin Epix Gen 2 or the Garmin 400 955 I'm wearing, these devices also have multi-frequency mode. They all look very similar. It's really hard to tell them apart. The only time I saw something different is when I used something like the Coros Pace 2, which does not 
not have a multi-frequency mode. Long story short, the Apple Watch Ultra has some of the best GPS accuracy on the market right now in my testing so far, and it's on par with the high-end garments that are available right now in terms of accuracy. And now that we're talking about accuracy, let's talk about accuracy from the optical heart rate sensor on the back of the Apple Watch Ultra. The heart rate sensor on the Apple Watch Ultra appears to be the exact same heart rate sensor that's on the Apple Watch Series 7 and Series 8. So I don't think there's a big difference there. And that's really good news because in the past, the Apple Watch Series 7 was one of the best performing heart rate sensors I ever tested on this channel. And it's no different on the Apple Watch Ultra. I'm getting really good results on the Apple Watch Ultra as compared to other devices. So for testing purposes, I've been on, on several runs while wearing the Ultra, an ECG sensor on my chest, an arm sensor. All in all, the Apple Watch Ultra seems to be performing really well and right in line with the Apple Watch Series 7. So no surprises there and good news all around. All right, we've reached that point. Final thoughts on the Apple Watch Ultra. Who is this thing actually for? This is a really tough one because it's really gonna come down to your use case because mine is different than yours. The Ultra is a really impressive smartwatch. In fact, it's probably the best smartwatch available right now on the market and a great first step for Apple to enter that high-end multi-sport wearable market with brands like Garmin. It's got some impressive features, great GPS accuracy, great heart rate performance, lots of metrics collected when you're out on your run, like running power, and probably one of the best displays I've ever tested on this channel. It's really awesome to look at. However, there is a big difference between being the best smartwatch and the best sport watch. And at the end of the day, Apple is marketing this thing towards adventurers and endurance athletes out there. And in some ways through that lens, it does fall short. After all, the Apple Watch Ultra is still just an Apple Watch at its core. And because of that, I really don't think it's fair to compare it to something like the Garmin Phoenix 7 or the Epix Gen 2, even though they're close in price and marketed towards the same people. They're just designed for different purposes. For instance, not having offline mapping and real navigation built into an $800 watch designed for adventurers with Ultra in its name is in my opinion, a bit of a miss. The new Compass app with Backtrack is a huge upgrade, but it's not nearly as full featured as something like Garmin's Topo Active Map implementation or even the breadcrumb navigation available on much cheaper options. Combine that with the lack of actionable training feedback like training load, training status, HRV status, body battery, stress tracking, how your sleep is affecting all these metrics, or a recovery advisor after your activities like you get on most of the sport watch competition. And of course, I do have to mention battery life. While it's great for an Apple Watch, it's a huge upgrade for them. It really doesn't hold a candle in the sport watch world when you're talking about things like the Garmin Enduro 2, which gets over a month of battery life and over 100 hours in a GPS activity. That's a big leap. If I'm going into the mountains for a week, two days of battery life just won't cut it. And I know it's unfair because the Garmin Enduro 2 is really not that impressive of a smartwatch. It doesn't do all the things the Apple Watch Ultra does, but that's why I said, it's not fair for me to compare these. They're designed for different purposes. But when I start to look at these as more of a tool than a gadget for intense activities, like ice climbing and hiking and things like that, it just doesn't hold up in some of these key areas. And I know what you're thinking, you can download additional apps for all this other stuff like Elite HRV for wellness tracking or Gaia GPS for course creation and offline mapping, and you can. But at that point, it does start to feel segmented because those apps aren't talking to each other. It's not all integrated. On the other hand, if you do fall into that niche market of being a scuba diver, this could be a one-stop solution for all of your needs, thanks to being dive certified. And that is really rare in today's market. You have a great smartwatch at a reasonable price and it's dive certified. It kind of does everything for you. It might sound like I'm being kind of harsh towards the Apple Watch Ultra and I probably am, but because of the price and the way it's marketed, I feel like I have to be because it is trying to compete with all these dedicated sport watches. However, despite all the things I just said about Apple Watch Ultra, this is not a bad watch. In fact, in many ways, it's really quite amazing. And with some updates down the road and new features like that low power or optimized power mode coming later this fall, I do think this watch is going to become a real problem for those dedicated sport watch brands out there like Garmin. As a smartwatch though, this thing is absolutely amazing. With more than advertised battery life, I'm getting a couple of days on a charge. It's got a cellular connection, so I'm able to stream music and text my friends on a go. I even get turn-by-turn -turn navigation while I'm driving my car and it integrates into the Apple ecosystem so I can control my Apple TV, check my email, do all, all sorts of things right on my wrist without having to 
get out my phone. It's really impressive. Like I said, the Apple Watch Ultra is probably the best smartwatch experience on the market today. So who is this thing for? At the end of the day, it comes down to you. Are you an ultra marathon runner that needs crazy long battery life for your next 100 miler? Are you a through hiker that's off the grid for months on end? Are you someone planning to hike and climb Mount Everest? Then the Apple Watch Ultra might not be for you and there's probably something better at this price point. However, if you're somebody who loves Apple products and you're already in the Apple ecosystem, you also don't mind charging your watch every couple of days. Maybe you train and run for distances up to a marathon or even a 50 mile ultra marathon or an Ironman triathlon and you want a full featured smartwatch with cellular connectivity, a rugged build, an incredible display, and you want it to do it all, the Apple Watch Ultra might be the watch for you. Another use case is that diver market. If you fall into that niche market of being a scuba diver and looking for a watch that can do it all that's dive certified, that's again why the Apple Watch Ultra might be right for you. And the final use case is going to be either a Apple Watch Series 7, SE, or Series 8 user who just wants more battery life. And again, the Apple Watch Ultra might be for you if you don't mind the price tag. So yeah, I might be able to live my everyday life with the Apple Watch Ultra and do my training runs, but for big events, I'd probably still have to reach for something like a Garmin Enduro 2. Phew, that was a lot to go through, wow. Now I wanna hear from you. Are you getting an Apple Watch Ultra? Are you gonna spend $800 on this thing? Or are you getting something else? Let me know down in the comments below what watch you're going for and what feature sold you on it. Are you getting one? Let me know. If you made it this far, you probably enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing down below because that really helps out my channel. It helps my channel grow. Also, if you're planning on getting an Apple Watch Ultra or an Apple Watch Series 7 or a Garmin Epix Gen 2 or any watch I showed off in this video, check out the links in the description down below because those help support my channel and they cost nothing extra to you. So you might as well use them. One last note, this is my initial in-depth review of the Apple Watch Ultra, but you'll probably want to stay tuned for lots more videos coming down the road including some intense comparisons with other devices and of course coverage of those new features that are coming later this fall. So yeah, subscribe. And that is all I've got. I probably missed something. I always do. I hope I didn't, but I did my best. Okay, I gotta go now. I'll see you next time. Bye.